Welcome to Podcasting of Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. Thank you so much for joining me here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go over to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe there or get 18 questions you need to start before you start a podcast over at Podcasting of Platforms. Now, today I want to start with my website. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about my website and what I use for my podcast. So a few years ago, I started on WordPress. When I started this podcast, apparently back in 2018, according to the Wayback Machine, is when I started the website for this. I can't believe I've been doing this that long. But the Podcasting of Platforms website was initially built on a WordPress platform. That's what I've built WeAreLibertarians.com on. That's what I've built LibertyExplained.com on. And I've used WordPress since 2007. That's actually how I got into content creation initially was... The Friday after Thanksgiving, I started my first blog, Spangles Angle, over at chris-spangle.com, which is now a Linktree site, linking all of my stuff together for all my different projects. But at the time, I started on WordPress, and you had to build everything. You had to know coding. You had to do... It was fairly turnkey for that era, but it was still... There was still a learning curve for sure. And then I just grew my skills over time. And WordPress obviously has gotten a lot easier. WordPress.org. Now there's, there, there was and there is WordPress.com, which you can have like a turnkey website. What I recommend for a lot of people if they just need a simple website is Wix. I don't recommend that for podcasters, and I'll tell you why. But Wix.com is, I think, very easy to use. It doesn't have the stigma that it did maybe 10 years ago. Oh, you're using a Wix website. That's uh, disgusting. And then Squarespace and other people, everybody just realized like, hey, I don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a developer to build a website. But I've built my own websites over the years. And wearelibertarians.com is very functional (laughs) because of templates and so on and so forth. You get to a point where you have a lot going on in your older age and you have a little more money, not much, but you can start to pay for services. And with podcasting of platforms.com, I started building it on a WordPress site and I very quickly got frustrated because I couldn't get that last. The thing about hiring professionals is they get you that last five to 10% that you can learn on your own. But if you hire somebody who has done it for 20, 30 years, they can get you that little 5 to 10% that just looks awesome that you didn't think about, right? And I just could not get certain functions and features of that website to work, and I was very frustrated by it. So I had been using Substack for a while, and I really like Substack. And I'll throw it up here on the screen for those of you watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please go check out the YouTube channel. But Substack is great. I've got chrisspangle.com on it. This is where I've moved my blog from a WordPress site over to Substack. It's free to use, and I've got four different sites on it. I've got the Chris Spangle Show, History of Modern Podcast, the History of Modern Politics, excuse me, and Indiana Podcast, which is uh, my radio show where I interview nonprofits. That's where I kept that show doesn't make me any money. It costs me time and money to do. And so I don't want to pay for a website to do that. I'm over at Substack and it's free and it offers all kinds of cool features, right? But I've got podcasting and platforms over there. And podcasting and platforms on Substack, you can see it's a little repetitive. It's a very simple site. The cool thing about Substack is that it helps you with posts. So you can have posts, it hosts a podcast for you. It does not only emails, that's the core feature of it is sending emails for your content, but it also has a subscriber feature. So you can do paid subscriptions on it. People can recommend it so they can get money for basically recommending your product. And the back end, I'll show you the dashboard here is very easy to use and it's you know very simple right upload a new video a new thread a new note which is their twitter version um it's got all the features that you need as a content creator and i've used it successfully for a while but i i ran into a problem recently where the ssl which is a security feature so http colon slash www.podcastingandplatforms.com 
the and then there's HTTPS and the S is uh, SSL. I don't know what that stands for. I'm not a security expert. I just know that you need it and you're dinged on Google if you don't have an SSL. And it's just good practice, especially if you have any kind of sign up or you're taking any kind of contributions. And most hosts, I use Bluehost. If you're looking for a host, you can go to the toolbox and grab uh, the link to Bluehost as well as Substack and as well as PodPage over at the toolbox. But the SSL is really important in helping keep your website secure. And I was having a problem with Substack where their SSL wasn't talking to my domain and it was causing an error. So if people went to my website directly, Google Chrome would give you that error of this website's not safe and you have to click the advanced button to go on to the website and I tried my best to get a hold of Substack and I could not get a hold of anybody because I talked to Bluehost and I talked to them four times in chat and their team said no there's nothing we can do they fixed a couple things they tried a couple things on their end but ultimately it was a Substack issue that they had to fix for my website and their customer service team is just not there I don't know if they even have one but I was pretty disappointed that over three to four months, I wasn't able to get a hold of anybody at Substack. This is a rarity. I have not had this issue in years with any other of my websites. I still recommend uh, Substack. I think it's a great tool. It's obviously low cost. They make their money. If you have people sign up for subscriptions, then it's fantastic. I have almost, I think I have all of my Substacks monetized. Uh, I have a few subscribers over on the Chris Spangle Show Substack because people want to support my work, but they don't necessarily want to support Patreon. So I do have that feature turned on there. Why people don't want to use Patreon, that's for a show of a different time. But after just being frustrated with that particular issue, I decided to switch to PodPage. And so let me go to PodPage and show you this is a guy that I met at Podcast Movement in 2021. I had already been using it. I've set up a couple clients on PodPage. I think it's a great tool. I don't want to go to the dashboard. I want to go to podpage.com. Yeah, I found out about them through Dave Jackson, who does the School of Podcasting, who does a really good job, who I will actually get to meet in November. He's coming to Indiana to do a podcast, local podcast convention. But I can't get to uh, pod pages. Oh, let me, you know, I don't know that I can try that. Yeah, let's see here. Sorry, I should have good practice is to set all your stuff. I had set up most of <laughs> my stuff beforehand. So you're not winging it while you're actually on the show. Well, shoot. Oh, here we go. Okay. So again, if you're over there on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. But what PodPage does is pulls in your RSS feed for you and creates your posts automatically. And it helps you build your website really with very limited uh, technological experience. It's somewhat like Wix in that it's fairly turnkey. And if you don't have a lot of experience with building websites or you're not very technically savvy, PodPage can do a lot for you and use. you can use their templates and make your website look great. And I've got a client. I'll give him a shout out because he's been on the show. But hold on. I'm thinking about the actual dual trends. Or I'll just edit this part out. A couple episodes we had on Sean K. Grady, and Sean actually has his website on pod page. This is the first time I really dove deep into it. And Sean does the environmental transformation podcast. And you see it's using Canva. Uh, he had his daughter actually build him some Canva images that he can just drop and drag some photos and redo the text in Canva. 
Uh, and he's got all kinds of different, he, he can use the blogging feature and it was a lot more user friendly than his old WordPress site, which was plain text because he just didn't have a lot of the tech skills to do a lot of the fine tuning that you need for a website. So the choice for me to use pod page was fairly easy. I'm a little more tech savvy. And let me show you the back end. And so you can do a lot of stuff with it. Here in the dashboard, you see there's the website, which gives you the page designer. You can add your domain. You can have different hosts and different guests. It adds all your social links. You, you can manage all of your different episodes. And I'll just give you a little hint of what that page designer looks like. You get to manage all of your different pages there all your different episodes you can edit each individual page people can leave reviews so i've had clients i've reached out to my clients i've reached out to listeners anybody that i've helped with their podcast just as a, a freebie right hey can you leave me a review and they've left that and it also imports all of your reviews from apple you can add your youtube stream so it'll pull in your videos and embed your youtube videos into your website on a video tab, creates a monetization page, marketing op optimization, search engine optimization. It does a lot for you. And it's basically just inputting into the text box what you want, right? So it's very easy to use. And there are some things that you've got to do that kind of you, you might need some help, right? Uh, if you do need help to the fine tuning, I'm always available. Uh, you can go book a client meeting at my website at podcastingplatforms.com and take an hour of mine and we can work that out and chit chat about it for a handsome fee. But the website looks like this. So you can input all your colors. So like the top bar here, the purple, that's the official color. You've got the Patreon. I wish that Patreon button was a little bit better or more customizable. But the cool thing about PodPage is the guy that actually created PodPage is super, super responsive to anybody that has a question or a need. He's not going to build your website for you, but I could email him, and I have in the past, like when we set up Sean's website, when I know Brian Nichols, he built his website on PodPage, wanted a couple features, emailed him, and like within two weeks, those features were added to the website. I think his name is Brendan the guy that actually created the pod page website. He's a developer and just felt that there was a need for this out there that automatically imported your podcasts. I can set this and forget it. I don't have to go in and edit any podcast. Like with the We Are Libertarians website, I have to remember when I publish a, an episode to go to the website and add that to my website. This automatically does it for you. That's a great feature. You've got your top banner where you can deliver your message of what the podcast is, and it's got these cool subscribe buttons here. Then I've chosen to give people the featured episodes. I do wish I could flip-flop this so the earlier ones could be at the beginning. Another feature I'm going to ask for, for some sorting, because I think it'd be a little easier. But I've got those earlier episodes where I talk about some of the basics right at the beginning for people. And then it also integrates with ConvertKit, which I've switched from Substack to ConvertKit for my emails and it gives you all the little subscribe buttons all your episodes you can add all kinds of different things i've got the reviews there and a footer with all the social links for everything you can add links so this will take you to you can't see it now but my coaching site it takes you to the toolbox where people can see the uh, different recommendations that i've got for all the different services that i use and recommend and all the different equipment the recommendations that I have, you also have those reviews, the about tab, the videos tab, where again, it pulls in all your different videos automatically for you. You build it out once and then you set it and forget it. And obviously with something like that, you want to go in probably once a month and just check through and see what you like. One thing that I do think I will miss is on Substack as people sign up to one of the four websites. I noticed that people will sign up for all four of my different sub stacks. So if they're there for an article from the Chris Spangle show, or they're there for podcasting of platforms, they see the other four. And so in those four different verticals, history, politics, podcasting, 
and nonprofits, I'll get subscriptions for all four. So it does mean that I do have to go in and keep track of who's in the pot in the Substack and move them over to ConvertKit and then also tell people in the email on on Substack you're going to be added to a ConvertKit list just to be honest about it. But that natural growth of my email list from Substack, that kind of is it, it'll still be there. It's just that people expect it to be on Substack and I'll probably still publish my episodes on Substack. Like I do have wearelibertarians.com for the political podcast. And then I also have the Substack for chrisspangle.com. So I make you just use both. So people who have been on my Substack get the benefit. It's a little extra work, but it's not that much extra work, right? It's just a copy and paste situation and you just build that into your routines. But I really wanted to invest in the podcasting and platforms podcast and start to grow it. And I want to, I am in the process of building a course. I want to do some cohorts where I'm doing one on like group coaching, essentially. I don't know how to put it. That's what a cohort is. It's really like the group coaches themselves and you lead the discussion. And I wanted to do a better job of promoting the fact that I do actually do podcast coaching as well as podcast editing. And that means you need to have a pop-up and that free PDF and some other services that can do a little bit better job of promoting all the different things that you do. And when you look at the Substack, all your links are down in the bottom right. And then on pod page, they're up at the top and you can have banners. And it advertised all these other services that I do a little bit better in the way that it organizes the homepage. That is why I am using Substack and uh, PodPage in conjunction, but my main website now is through PodPage. So it's a great tool. I highly recommend it. You saw Patreon in there. I started a Patreon for this show. I'm just about to get ready rolling on the content. I am still playing with Supercast, which is a Patreon alternative. I like Patreon. I like it for the We Are Libertarians podcast network and the Chris Spangle show. That's what most of my patrons and most of my support for that show comes from Patreon. But I'm thinking about using Supercast with this just because I want to try it out and try something different so I can give you better recommendations. But if, but I probably just keep both. So if people are in the Patreon environment, then they can subscribe there. And then I'll do a little extra work and use Supercast too and see what I like better, right? And then if nobody signs up for one, then just go, oh, everybody's on Patreon. I'll stick with this. But if you want to subscribe, if you get something out of this, I operate on the value for value model. If you get value out of the show, it's free to you. It's monetized with ads. We don't really make that much off of those transactional ads. Transactional ads are like YouTube ads. But if you get something of value from the show and my advice has been helpful to you, then the best way you can get value back is through Patreon. It helps us uh, pay for all of these different services. I've now got a cost, right, for a new website for, I think it's $20 a month, which is not outrageous by any stretch of the imagination. But there's those kind of costs that creep in and you can help offset that and grow. And also you get to feed my family a little bit, which it works out because the money that I am spending now on websites, I can spend on food for them. So <laughs> it's uh, just a great way to get value. So if you are learning something, if you're liking this podcast, then please check it out. I also want to ask if you're a listener and you have a podcast or you're thinking about starting a podcast, one thing I'm going to start doing is more Q&As with people live on the show here. So I would love for you to go to actually the podcasting and platform social media. And there is the link to my Calendly where you can sign up. You can also send me an email at chris at podcastingandplatforms.com and we can set up a time then. But I'd love to have a podcaster on who has a problem that they need solved with their podcast or you've hit a plateau or you're looking to start a podcast and you don't know where to begin and you have an idea, but you need it shaped a little bit. Uh, I, would I would be happy to do a conversation with you here on the podcast. So please check that out. That's what I'm looking for. And thank you so much for joining me here on podcastingandplatforms.com. I really do appreciate you listening. I appreciate you sharing this podcast and sharing it with your friends. And stay tuned. There's going to be so much more that I'm working on. I'm really starting to invest a lot more time into this. I have TikToks and more episodes can more consistently and all the stuff I've mentioned. So go to podcastingandplatforms.com and sign up for the email. And we'll see you again soon.